Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Simply Learn. In today's video, we're going to learn all about JavaScript asynchronous concept that is async and await. In our previous video, we covered the topic of JavaScript promises. If you haven't checked that video already, make sure you watch it before you watch this video. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and learn about async and await. Firstly, let's understand the basic concepts of synchronous and asynchronous programming. In case of synchronous programming, all the actions are performed sequentially. So you have the execution of the function 1, after which you have function 2, and then you have function 3. And after all of these are executed, the program terminates. Now, although synchronous programming is clean and has lesser errors, it has its own drawbacks. The entire system is halted when a particular process is being executed. Now, as a result of which, it is time consuming and the system is not used to its full capacity. So, to overcome that, asynchronous programming was introduced. Now, in this case, let's assume that a particular function or a process is being executed. Now let's consider that this particular function is waiting for a resource, let's say a network resource. Now instead of waiting for the function to acquire this resource, the main thread continues its execution with function 2 and function 3. And when the resource is acquired, it receives a callback, indicating that the function 1 has to be called. And finally, the entire chain is terminated. So this is how asynchronous programming works. It makes sure that the system does not halt when a particular process is waiting for a resource. This makes the entire system very efficient. Now that you know the concepts of synchronous and asynchronous programming, let's move ahead. Now async and await are purely asynchronous programming concepts. I again suggest you check out the video on promises before watching this. Alright, so moving on. What are JavaScript async functions that is async and await? Now, async and await are built on promises. The function is basically accompanied by the keyword async, indicating that it returns a promise. Within this function, the await keyword is applied to the promise that is being returned. And the await keyword ensures that the function waits for the promise to resolve. Now, on the surface, the execution looks synchronous while it's actually asynchronous. Now, at the place of usage of the await keyword, the execution of the function is practically blocked. Now, async functions make the code more readable and are easier to handle when compared to promises. Now, to give you the general syntax, you have the async keyword associated with the function name, within which we have the await keyword with a particular promise. Now, to help you understand the entire concept better, let's look at a demo. Now, I've created a file called async await in my Visual Studio code. So, what we're going to be doing is that we're going to have two functions that help you check for the result. Now you pass this code as a parameter to these functions which in turn return promises telling if you have passed and will also give you the grade that you've scored. Alright, so let's go ahead and say let, let me call the variable result and let's have a function which takes the score as a parameter. Alright, within which it returns a promise. So I say return new promise. Now as you know, a promise basically has a function which takes two parameters that is resolve and reject. Now I just display a message saying calculating results. Alright, now if my score is say above 50, I resolve it by displaying a message saying congratulations, you have passed. Alright, and if it is less than 50, I reject it with a message saying you have failed. Alright, so this is a very simple promise that I created. So moving on, let's create another function that returns a promise. So basically, this function will tell you the grade that you've scored. So say let grade equals function. Now this takes response as a parameter. So let me just say response. Now again, let me just copy this. 
all right within which i'm going to console log a message saying calculating your grade now we're just going to resolve the promise with the message your grade is a all right and then we append the response now the first promise either resolves saying that you've passed or it rejects saying you failed and in case it gets resolved then the next promise is automatically resolved with the grade a all right so moving on let's call the functions so here let me first call the function result so i say result and let me pass the value 80 since it gets resolved and now i make use of the dot then method now here i catch the response all right and then i just display a message indicating results received okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass the response to my next function that is the grade function so what i say is i say return grade and the parameter is response so let me just pass that now what exactly happens is that the grade function also returns a promise so on top of that i can use the dot then method so i use the then method and let me just say final grade now within which i just display the message final grade all right now lastly we make use of the catch method in case of errors this catches the errors so let me just say error and then we'll console log it all right so this is the code let me save this and let's execute it to see its normal execution so this is without using async and await all right so let's go ahead and execute this so here let me check the console and there we go it says calculating results results received calculating your grade your grade is a and congratulations you have passed so this was basically without using async and await so now let me show you how you can use async and await and how easier the code becomes all right so what we can do is let me just comment this out all right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to call my function right so i'm just going to make use of the async keyword while calling it so i say async function and let me call the function calculate results okay so now inside this method i'm going to call the functions result and grade so when i first call result the value that is returned by result is going to be stored in the variable response so for that let me just say const response now i make use of the await keyword here i say await result of 20 or in our case let me just say 80 all right so what the await keyword does is that the function result ceases to execute until the promise is resolved and whatever the promise returns gets stored in the variable response all right so now after this let me just display a message that says results received all right now next i'm going to call the other function that is great so again i'm going to say constant and i'm going to have to create another variable let me call it final grade and it's the same procedure i use the await keyword and call the function grade and i pass response as the argument all right and after this i'm going to say console log a final grade so it's as simple as that so first we call the result function which returns a promise which gets stored in the variable response all right then we're going to call the grade function and pass the response as an argument and the result of which is being stored in final grade all right and lastly we display final grade so now you must be wondering if this executes what about errors what if the value that i pass is less than 50 right for that i'm going to have to catch an error 
So what I can do is that I can place this entire code within the try block. All right. So let me just say try. And now what I can do is I can catch. Now if there is an error, it gets caught and then I display it. So let me say console log error. All right. And lastly, let's call the function calculate results. Okay, so let me save this and execute it. So, all right, here we go. It displays the same messages in the same sequence that we saw before. So now to give you an example of rejection, so here let me just pass 20. All right, let's save it. And there we go. It says calculating results, you have failed. So you can make use of async and await instead of complicating the entire piece of code by using promises. So with that, we conclude this session on JavaScript async await. If you have any doubts, let us know in the comment section below. We'll get back to you immediately. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to never miss an update. We'll come up with more videos on JavaScript, so watch out for them. Until then, keep learning and stay tuned to Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.